Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with Stuart Wax, President and CEO of the Jewish Community Association of Greater Phoenix. The association is a recent consolidation of the Jewish Federation of Greater Phoenix and the Valley of the Sun Jewish Community Center. Stuart joined in 2012 after extensive experience turning around programs, fundraising, and image at Jewish community centers most recently in Minneapolis. And he has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Stuart, for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you so much. So it is so difficult to fuse organizations, businesses, nonprofits. Talk about how this actually came about in Greater Phoenix. Certainly. The initial impetus for looking at, at merging these organizations was financial. The recession hit this community very hard and likely and as well hit the organizations hard and originally was just looking for financial efficiencies. Shortly as the community leadership was looking at it, they realized there also were a lot of effectiveness opportunities, um, mission alignment between what the JCC was doing and the then Federation was doing, um, which really then led to the ultimate concept of the creation of the Jewish Community Association of Greater Phoenix to keep the fundraising arm, of which was the Federation, community planning and outreach, and then the JCC is set up to really be a support organization of the association to fulfill our mission through programming and experiences. And then in terms of the efficiencies that you were referring to that prompted this, um, we, we of course had that terrible real estate collapse here that affected Phoenix so, so badly. Absolutely. And, and the, the impact on the, on the broader business community has been truly devastating. So now you've brought, it to, brought the organization under one infrastructure. Have you been able to provide better support to each of the organizations by consolidating functions internally? Um, we're in the beginning process. Naturally, you won't need to have duplicate higher level staff in right. both. And ultimately, there'll be a smaller FTE count for those areas. Um, but equally importantly, what will happen is uh, the ability to intertwine what we do. Uh, that the Federation previously through missions, through some of our events, uh, our Israel program office was actually doing programming. You have the JC with all this programmatic expertise, actually much more than the Federation had. So even though we're, we're one umbrella but keeping the JC from a legal structure separate, all that programming will fall underneath that chief program person mm -hmm. and all the program expertise will end. Federation, now association, had more experience on the fundraising side. There still will be the JC doing fundraising. We will have one lead development officer right. who will coordinate all that fundraising. Um, it also will help uh, the Federation, now the association, didn't have a lot of opportunities to really have a public face regular relationships where a JCC with all of its membership and programs experiences allows us as the community umbrella to really develop stronger relationships. So there's going to be a lot of synergies as well as just the operating efficiencies, you know, on the, all those things I mentioned in IT and facilities and everything else that will naturally come from this. So talk about your um, thinking when you were considering taking this, this, uh, this challenge. Uh, many leaders would take a look at, a, at, the, at the first chief executive of a recent consolidation and they would not touch that opportunity with a 10-foot pole. Well, I've been told I'm nuts many a times. I was incredibly happy and successful in Minneapolis. and really thought, other than the long winters, it might be a place we stay at least till retirement. And then I've been sought out after for a few different uh, opportunities. And when actually I was originally reached out for this, I said no initially. But then as I really began looking at the scope of the opportunity to keep doing all the wonderful things uh, I could, through my leadership, do for a community through a JCC and then broaden that envelope to support multiple agencies, uh, federation, now association. In some ways you could look at it as like a United Way for Jewish communal, Jewish nonprofits in, an, in a locale, as well as supporting Israel and overseas needs. So they enabled me to broaden that portfolio. I also found a niche, if you will. I've been very successful in a variety of either turnarounds or revitalizations, and I like a good challenge. And as I was coming down for multiple visits in this process of being selected and determining to take it, I saw an incredible desire and energy for this community and this Jewish community to really be something more, to be something different, to be something better, um, which gave me the belief that it was doable. While there were a lot of challenges, or you could say opportunities, 
um, there really is a, a energy within the community to to be more and to really come together and, and capitalize on these opportunities that are presenting ourselves, which to me is a wonderful opportunity to me to be a leader in that environment, uh, to be part of taking a community from where we are now after struggling with the recession and all the other impacts we've had and really broaden that impact. So before you came to, to Phoenix, you were in Minneapolis and you referred to uh, liking a good challenge. Talk about your career trajectory. How did you get into this, yeah. this field of endeavor? It's actually a, a great question and it's part of what has me have the passion I have for what I do. Um, I had personally wandered about as far from my culture and religion and Judaism as both as one could. Never denounced it or converted, but I pretty much had run away from it, had graduated college and uh, was actually offered a job at the Cleveland Clinic uh, and was doing landscaping and construction because it was a funded job, waiting for the funding to come through. And someone told me about this job at the JCC. It had nothing to do with the fact that it was a JCC. It was a this was in real, this was in Cleveland, a real job with a real salary. I won't mention what that salary was. Um, so I took it. And then slowly, just from being in an environment, this Jewish and communal pilot light that I didn't even think existed, just from expanding my social circles, being in that environment, that fuel started going on it and really relit a big part of me that I didn't even know still existed. Um, I've done it through my work, um, um, but we as a JCC, as a federation, as a Jewish community, had the opportunity to really bring that and brighten that in so many people's lives. I'm a big believer that religion, culture, faith, belief, being part of a peoplehood really is a big part of life balance and we have the opportunity to do that, so that greatly has inspired me through my career, um, as well as opportunity to serve the general community, which on the JCC side we do, and, and people getting connected to a different culture, or just in, in addition inspiring that life balance in people. And I started out at your typical entry-level job, and I've always been a, a kind of a driven entrepreneurial spirit and created some business models within there, which kind of then just ratcheted me uh, along my career, and then my first involvement in a turnaround. I was the assistant executive director, COO in uh, Metropolitan Detroit, a large system that was going through some major challenges in yes. the early mid-90s. Um, and uh, that's when I really discovered my skill set both in business development and, and turnaround planning. And uh, that's been a big part of what I've done ever since then. What's really interesting to me is how these communal organizations create models of service, taking the strengths that they have within their communities, even when the communities are impoverished, um, uh, very often as new immigrants coming uh, under very uh, difficult circumstances, they take their strengths and they invest those strengths into buttressing those strengths, but also making up for their weaknesses. And, and over the years, over the generations, uh, build up their services until they start providing services beyond family and children's services uh, provided by Jewish communal groups, by Catholic communal groups, and other uh, affiliated institutions and non-affiliated institutions mm -hmm. have made quite a contribution to society. Absolutely. I think it's, it's one thing I'm proud of about what we do. And as you mentioned, there's other faiths and cultures and, and, and communities that, that do some more work is that while the initial focus and creation of, actually the original creation of federation was around um, jointly raising money in this country to help Jews when Israel was being created and all the challenges in Israel and in Russia, former Soviet Union, mm -hmm. and then began funding local needs as well. And the JCC also began its creation primarily because Jews weren't accepted. Right. Um, at that time in most communities, Jews couldn't go to their country club, couldn't go recreate in places, couldn't participate in leagues and recreational activities. So while both started very focused on, on Jewish community, Jewish people either in this country or overseas, um, now really have a major impact actually on broader community as well through those services, um, financial assistance, and really bringing communities together and strengthening it. So I think it's a wonderful thing that many nonprofits and communities uh, have branched beyond their original focus. And I've had discussions with so many uh, communities of diverse people, either in diaspora or, or others, from the Indian communities um, across the U.S., uh, Tibetan communities, Native American communities, um, and, and various other uh, communities that are, that are looking at these models. That's true, yeah. And, and how do you adopt um, a, a model that has worked 
uh, for the Jewish community, for the Tibetan community that is dispersed, or uh, the Persian community, the Iranian community, which is, is a huge diaspora community throughout the world. What type of lessons do you feel that the uh, that your experience has for the broader for broader society. Uh, it's a great question. A few things that pop into my head. One is the comfort in embracing your culture uh, in a way that's as diverse as possible. Um, you know, in Judaism, there's Reform Judaism, Conservative Judaism, Orthodox Judaism, Just Jewish, Barely Jewish, whatever. Uh, phrases you so there's no, there's no just one there's right no answer? There's no just one right answer. So really looking at what are ways and programs and experiences and volunteer engagement opportunities that will, that will hit a broad community. What are ways that it can be done that are comfortable and non-threatening? Which, which is really the difference between what a JCC or a Jewish uh, Family and Children's Services versus a synagogue. Not better or worse, but synagogues will have a very important but narrow focus. When you look at community centers or Jewish family and children's services and Jewish vocational services, you can really broaden that umbrella, be proud of your culture, your peoplehood, but do it in a comfortable way that's not threatening and even inclusive of others. So is this a case where you can have the very secular and the very religious together working the very liberal and the very conservative? A the very absolutely. traditional and, and the person who questions everything and every tradition That's working together to, to, for a common interest? Uh, for the most part, there is no, no pure and simple answer, and there are challenges with it. But that's really the goal on what we do through, through our support organization, the JCC, and what JCCs do. And a way, even a lot of what federations or us, the association, fund is we able to have the ability to fund very diverse approaches. Some may be targeted at specific parts of that population. Some may be targeting things that pull them together. And then the JC is absolutely a place that all those come together. You can have somebody uh, in a class or on a treadmill or in the pool or at a play that could buy the whole campus and someone else who wouldn't be there if we weren't giving the major scholarship, no one would know the difference. You could have someone that daven and prays every day and someone that happened to just be born Jewish all coming together in a comfortable way, sharing those experiences, and which is also a beautiful thing of what I would say we do as an association as well as through the JC. Is there's not a specific end game in mind. We're not necessarily getting people trying to get people more religious or less religious. For for the, the majority of the people we serve, the Jewish community, it's just getting them to be intentionally Jewish, to embrace something and go wherever those journeys are. And for the general community, giving them opportunities to be exposed to that learn about that, enjoy what they enjoy, and then just participate in the great programs and services we have that will enrich their life. So you navigate the differences and come together on things that, that right. people want to engage in. A absolutely. And if you have somebody of tremendous means and somebody of no means whatsoever, it is interesting to hear you talk about the idea of, of commonality so that the point people come together, there's really no difference. But there is a financial reality that underlies this. There is a redistribution of means, of wealth. So it is true in the environment in which you're, you're, uh, you're operating that the people with means are contributing their means, and oh. those means are being absorbed by people with no means. A absolutely. If, if we... Even as I mentioned, the JCC has a large chunk of their revenue that's earned revenue. There still is a big chunk that's contributed. And bulk of that is just like the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 comes from 20% of the donors, your bigger donors. And on the association side, we raise millions of dollars to be redistributed, to use those words, within our community through programming done by a variety of, of Jewish organizations, as well as giving to a lot of overseas needs. So a big part of what we do is tell the stories, find those, those uh, opportunities that match with people's philanthropic passions, their personal passions, to allow them to have that additional way of being part of the community by providing their philanthropic support to allow even either these agencies or programs to exist, or in many cases to make them available to a much broader spectrum of people. Uh, then otherwise could go to that preschool, go to that day school, attend that play, attend that summer camp, go on that trip to Israel, have a place to recreate and be healthy, not be isolated as a senior, et cetera, et cetera. So we are heavily dependent 
Um, and the bulk of our money is from individual givers. It's not government grants. Um, some of its foundations, but the bulk of the money we raise is from family foundations and individual givers. So why do you not get diverted into this conversation that seems to permeate our body politic as a nation in which you have people throwing charges back and forth where, where you have people, uh, certain people saying there's a desire to redistribute wealth and you know you're not earning and you're not creating and we are the creators and so on and you have others saying uh, you know you're benefiting from this this society and and you want us to pay for the party and uh, and so on why does that not happen because there must be within the Jewish community that same broad oh, range yeah. of we're, views from the we're, ultra. We're the same as everybody. We have right, left, in the middle, Democrat, Republican. So why rich, isn't everybody poor. frozen in place and arguing it with, with each other as, yeah. as, as our American politics seems to be sometimes? Maybe American politics should use us as a model. Um, I think one of what, I mean, it is a little different. Um, and the Jewish community that, is fractious at times. I oh, mean, oh not, I could, not, that's an understatement. Absolutely, we are far from uh, immune of, of some of the things you're talking about and many other challenges that happens regularly in this Jewish community and Jewish communities across the country. I think part of the way we avoid some of that is none of it is by law, none of it is by requirement that we're really aligning people's passions, their personal missions of things that, that were important to them, their grandparents for their grandkids, or future generations, be it here. And we have enough of a menu of options for our givers, either directly what we do programmatically through the JCC, or for the variety of organizations we support locally and overseas, that that redistribution of wealth is voluntary. Um, people are redistributing their wealth Yes, there's positive tax consequences for them to feel good. I've always felt that giving in some ways is selfish, and I mean that in a very positive way. I know that when I make contributions, I feel amazing. So because people are giving to something they believe in to do something they believe needs to be done, we don't arm twist in our fundraising. We don't want people giving because they feel they have to. We give them opportunities to give where they can really see and feel the impact and it aligns with those passions. And the way we operate is, yes, we have names on walls and we have giving categories that could set up those caste systems, if you will. But the way we treat people from a relationship standpoint is really everybody is the same. We really try to, in the spirit of our relationships, in the spirit of our, our programs and experiences we deliver, to do it in an inclusive fashion um, that, that everybody is the same from that aspect, or at least treated the same. So it starts with respect, but it, it, it but even before respect comes communication, comes a a solicitousness. What do you, what would you like to contribute, with the assumption that people like to contribute, and what do you need, and let's see if we can bring things, bring people together, and and come together as as one community. Something that America truly needs. Oh, I, I, yeah. The, very well said and absolutely. And part of it is we do try to operate on Jewish values and a lot of things that are Jewish values could be Christian values and Mormon values and whatever other religious values. But we really are a, we're not a religious organization, the JC or even the association. Um, it's much more on the, the people with the community standpoint. We do provide through the association some funds for things that would be seen as more religious. Um, but it's really about the values, um, the values of, you know, who is strong, one who helps others, not one who takes on others or overrules others. And then the whole concept of being a family and, and the strong history in Judaism of taking care of your brother and your sister. And I think part of it is because while we can have a loud, uh, important presence as Jews, we are a very, very small minority, very different than all, most other peoplehoods, cultures, and religion. And we've had our experiences both positive and negative because of that. So there also is a, a understanding of our need to, to educate ourselves and support ourselves and build strength, not just, which is another thing we really try to do, a lot of what we do and fund are for your basic needs. But at the same time, we have a strong focus on putting a lot of money and effort not to basic needs, 
but to community needs, because without a strong community, it's kind of like the preventative medicine approach. Right. But in a way, this is what this is. We're also making sure that, that seniors don't become isolated where they need those basic needs, that there is a strong passion for Jewish community so people continue to support it. So a lot of what we do is also in education, in arts and humanities, in maybe broader social service arenas, is funding things and providing services that will build and maintain a strong community so there's enough of us there to support those in the Jewish community and outside of the Jewish community that have those basic needs. How do you interact with other organizations uh, outside of the Jewish community as, as an association? Well, we're brand new as an association. I'm not sure exactly how the Federation Well, how was. do you wish to interact? How I wish to, um, which probably will be six months or a year to now as we're, you know, developing final steps of the merger and creating what our structure would be. I actually think that's very important and critical. It will not be... A, a significant amount of our focus and time. Um, a, I believe there's other collaborations that can bring about efficiencies and effectiveness. There's some marvelous, be they for-profit groups or other nonprofits in this in this community that do things very well that we could learn from, that we could share with, that we could collaborate on programming with, just for the sake of it. As well as a big part of what we want to do is build awareness of our faith and religion and culture and others. It's the best way to combat anti-Semitism or racism, hate, and even on the internal side, be it staff training, board development, we all need those resources, and by pulling together, we all can bring different things to the table. Well, Stuart, this has been wonderful. It's been very informative, and thank you so much for your insights. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks so much for having me. Really enjoyed it. Thank you.